and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. You're watching the fine print. It's been seven days that the goods and services tax regime kicked in and there are already headlines about prices, about masterclass by the revenue secretary, clarifications from the government and whatnot. A committee set up by the Consumer Affairs Ministry has increased the helplines available to consumers from existing 14 to 60. And already in the first week, they have received more than 700 complaints. Companies have been told to mandatorily revise the MRP on the stock that they have carried on into the GST regime. And any, uh, any failure to do or revise the MRPs will face fines of up to 1 lakh rupees, including a jail term. So let's see so far what are the prices that we know about. Um, Lots of good news coming in from the auto sector. Companies like Tata Motors, m and have reduced uh, their prices anywhere on cargoes from 4.3% to 4.2%. Yeah, yeah, on sure. cars of up to 12%, m and has reduced prices on small cars up to 1.4% and on commercial vehicles 0.5 to 1.1%. Good news uh, continues with Honda on all the models of Honda, Brio, Amaze, Jazz, WRV, City, BRV, CRV, there have been price cuts. Ford India and uh, two wheelers, uh, companies like TVS Motor, Honda Motorcycle, Scooter India, and Suzuki Motorcycle have also announced price cuts. In the consumer segment, we have got very little news in terms so far on price cuts. iPhone has become cheaper from anywhere between 4% to 7.5% on different models. Uh, Colgate Palmolive has reduced uh, its prices on toothpaste and toothbrushes anywhere from 5 to 10 percent cement companies have announced price cuts by 2 to 3 percent and cigarettes have become cheaper by 6 to 9 percent to talk about some of the transition issues and uh, the, whether it's dealers or whether it is manufacturers what they are facing i have with me ms money of deloitte india and uh, darya shil patil president of all india consumer products distribution federation uh money welcome to the show uh, how has the week been for you? Is it as uh, tiring as the run-up to GST was? Are you still burning the midnight oil? I would say it's been even more tiring than uh, the run-up to the GST. And that is, I believe, it's largely because while we have a very good tax, uh, in the initial phase, we certainly don't be having a simple tax. It's, it's an extremely complex tax that we are going to have. And that's what is keeping all of us awake with... Uh, 18 hour work days and 7 day weeks for now something like uh, the last 9 months. Wow, okay. So there's nothing good and simple about this tax as uh, sort of projected by the government? It's very good. So so as I said before, it's very good. It's wonderful. It's excellent. We are moving but into... Really to, it's certainly not simple and possibly I guess uh, the complexity will continue maybe for 6 months to a year. Uh, it will take time to settle down because this is a huge change. Uh, initially, if you recollect, when GST was conceived, people looked at it as a tax change. So a year back, it was looked at as a tax change. Uh, around six months back, people started saying this is a business change. I would say after launch of GST, my view is this is a nationwide change. It's bigger than a business change because it's not affecting businesses only. It's, the economy it's affecting the economy, it's affecting consumers, consumers it's right. affecting business, it's right. affecting movement of goods, it's affecting the whole country. So this is a countrywide change the way I look at it. Okay, to get pulse of what's happening on the ground, we are joined by Dharashil Patil, President of the All India Consumer Products Distribution, Distributors Federation. Mr. Patil, welcome to the show and welcome back on, uh, on our GST special. Uh, give us a sense of how distributors uh, of your association are dealing with the transition in the first week. Yeah, uh, this is just the first week and all of our distributors are in the phase of uh, upgrading their software and uh, making it GST compliant. So as of now, we are finding it very difficult to get the software upgraded as the SKUs in FMCG industries are varying from say around 300 to 1200 SKUs per distributor. Hence, no a billing has been started from distributor to retailer point. Even FMCG companies are finding it difficult Till 5th of yesterday, no company had built a distributor as of now. There are notes of few companies upgrading their software to GST, but still in the market, the stocks are there which have been supplied in the month of June. 
So distributors haven't got new fresh stock for the month of July yet from companies. Is that the case? No, we are leaving a few companies aside. Most of the companies have not resumed their supplies with the new MRP and new pricing to the distributors as yet. Okay, all right. When uh, you know, Mr. Patil mentioned that they are struggling with what FPUs about thousand to two thousand. Yeah. Uh, what's that like? I would say this is to a large extent because of the fact that in the run-up to GST, most of the companies did excellent inventory planning. And this inventory planning is something which has been done by virtually all the large companies that I am familiar with. And in all of these cases, they have planned their inventory to take care of it till possibly middle of July or end of July. And therefore, it was expected that during the last week of June and during the early part of July, there would be a reduction in the moment of goods because people have treated 30th June as if it were 31st March when most companies close their books of accounts. And most companies when they do this on 31st March, they don't wait till 31st March. They typically close their sales books on 25th, 26th, 27th so that they can take stock, they can adjust the prices, they can do whatever is necessary. So to some extent this year at the end of quarter one, we have also been having a situation similar to 31st March where most companies have stopped their last week dispatches, most companies have closed their sales books. But this is not, I believe, leading to any kind of disruption in the market because companies have been prepared, they have planned for it and they have ensured that adequate inventory is there at all locations. Okay, uh, Mr. Part of the inventory that you are holding, have you revised MRPs on that as yet, the ones that are you are forwarding to retailers? Uh, I didn't get your question, ma'am. The the inventory that is with distributors is the MRP on those products revised? No, not uh, as of now. The MRPs are just uh, MRPs which are the stocks are of June, June. We have received. We have not received any stock with new MRPs in July as yet. No, but the so, Consumer Affairs Ministry has said, right, that if on products where the price has reduced, uh, they have uh, they have asked retailers to paste additional stickers reflecting that uh, new price. Is that exercise going on? Uh, we, we have received certain information from the companies, but we have not received the stickers or whatever the uh, MRP reduction has to be done. As far as now, only Colgate have issued a price list uh, reduction uh, rate, which we have already uh, sent to uh, shared with you. Sure. Okay. Is there a window or to revise this MRP? Uh, when? Thirty days. Okay, Thirty so days is what the government has said. So till 30th July, the, the revised MRP uh, can be pasted on the transition stock. Yeah. And in any case, the way most <laughs> companies have planned their inventory, you will not have too much of the existing stock anyway. going on in any which case no, after 30th that's of July. No, but true for MCG, FMCG products, right? No, but not may not be true for other products. I would say majority of products, people have done a lot of planning during the last three months because uh, bear in mind GST is not something which has come and hit us all of a sudden. Overnight, not overnight, of course yeah, not. The dates were announced in January sure, sure. and the finance minister kept repeating 1st of July over the last three months or so. So most of the large companies, most of the organized players have been getting ready for this. So there are certainly certain complexities that they are facing now which they didn't anticipate. So I'm not saying it is you know, seamless or the transition is without any issues, sure. there certainly are issues. But in terms of knowing what stock they need to maintain, what they need to bill out, what is their minimum order quantity, I believe all those things are pretty well okay, planned. I'll come to the complexities in a bit. Mr. Patil, give me a flavor of you mentioned that you know, you're getting your systems ready. Um, how, how is that exercise working out? Because uh, I'm not sure if, if we have ready solutions in the market by uh, the ASPs as yet. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, you are asking regarding the uh, re readiness of our distributors for AFP, right? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I will, I am very glad to let you know that we have signed an agreement with Carvi, uh, Simple Life, and uh, have start, uh, will be launching a portal on 9th of uh, July, that is on Sunday, where our distributor members can connect to the ASP and upload their data to get GST compliance. So we have made a separate individual portal for our members. 
Okay, so Karvi, I believe, is an ESP, right? And that That's will right. help connect the distributor network to the GSP. Uh, help me understand, uh, in terms of the technology awareness, uh, was it, what is that like for the di distributors? And also, um, uh, the information that you use to sort of capture uh, in a bill before the GSP regime kicked in, is that very different from what you have to do now? Yes, exactly. It is very different what we have to do now. Because uh, as since HSN ports have to, have to be come in, then uh, we have a complex of all uh, tax uh, rates from 5%, 12%, 18%, 18%, and 28%. So the, uh, the entire data will have to be, and the billing will have to be done according to the formats given by GST. Okay. Uh, is that a problem, money that you are uh, sort of getting as feedback from clients in terms of classification with HSN ports? There is, there are certainly some issues with respect to classification and uh, for instance, how would you classify plastic furniture? Okay. Would you classify it as an article of plastic or would you classify it as furniture? Okay. Now one is 18 percent, one is 28 percent. So and if this problem didn't exist in the earlier regime? This problem didn't exist in the earlier regime and uh, in the earlier regime this problem could not, I mean it would have existed in a different way because each state had a different VAT rate you know, for furniture, for plastic articles, so we didn't have to worry about it. But when you look at something like a plastic molded furniture, is it essentially a furniture which is made out of plastic or it is largely a product of plastic Correct. which also happens to be a furniture. Sure. Now the manufacturer's view on this seems to be it is making plastic molded furniture is similar to making any plastic product. It's like making a plastic jug, a bucket, anything out of plastic. And they seem to be feeling therefore this is an item of plastic. So what if it looks like a furniture? Okay. The okay. government view seems to be, no, this is furniture, so you better pay 28%. Oh, already there is a government view on it? Absolutely. Okay, of course. Right? So, so, so like these, I believe there are a lot of classification issues. Uh, we have to bear in mind at this stage that in excise, the classification issues took around 25 years to settle down. Yeah. Here, we are not hoping that it will take 25 years, but okay. should take at least 3 or 4 years to settle down. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be really sad if you be 25 years from now going to stand here and discuss that. Uh, Mr. Patil, you want to tell me about some of the classification issues that uh, distributors are facing? Uh, classification issues, yes, because we have some products coming down from 12% uh, currently to 6%. And uh, in especially in hair oil, we have uh, perfumed hair oil and uh, regular hair oils. So we have some issues, but companies are looking into it and they will send us the detailed uh, classification report. Okay. How is in the interim this problem going to get resolved? Because when you are punching an invoice, my understanding is that you have to enter the correct HSN code, which is how you know it will get decided, uh, the CGST, SGST will get decided or IGST will get de decided on it. Uh, so if you are not doing that uh, calculation or that HSN code right on, on day one, uh, it's going to have a ripple effect on everything, right? On your credits and everything, uh, on the amount of tax that you've already paid yeah, it or will. excess credit, right? So it's it's not just a number that you're struggling with. It has ramifications much more than just getting the code right. Absolutely. So in the interim, how, how should companies figure this out? Okay, so when we talk of an HSN code, an HSN code is something which is subject to interpretation. So it's not a product description, it's an HSN code. So no, I might say that I am in this HSN code, hmm. if you are the tax authority, you could say no, you are not in this HSN code. Now that gets settled much, much later. No, but assessments in the earlier regime used to come what, two years later, but here it's going to be what, two months or three months process, right? Possibly, possibly. But, 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 but the key point over here is irrespective of what we do, hmm. there are going to be classification issues. And there is going to be litigation. Uh, may not be litigation. There are going to be classification issues. Depends on whether companies would like to pursue the litigation route or whether they would like to, you know, go in for an advance ruling. Or there are many other methods in, you know, GST which are permitted. So, I mean, the point that he was mentioning in terms of uh, would oil be treated as hair oil or edible oil? So, so now that's to be decided on a fact-specific, you know, case. And is it possible that, you know, X, X? Uh, manufacturer or retailer decides it in one fashion and yeah. the other because it's not a common platform where That's everybody right. is coming together and discussing it, right? That's Maharashtra right. in Maharashtra, one guy may do it 
right. uh, at five percent, the other may do at twelve percent. Absolutely. And I'm sure the uh, tax authorities will be talking to each other. They do. So, so here we have to bear in mind that there's no concept of crowdsourcing, where you yes. can get everyone on the yeah, same platform same page, and right? everyone agrees. It, it doesn't happen. Sure. So people do take different views. Sometimes they take different views even within a particular state. Right. Sometimes it, it takes uh, across states. And over a period of time, the law evolves and classification issues get settled. So this, this will take time? Before this is something see. which should take time because classification is a huge challenge uh, for the basket of products that we have in our country. Sure. Okay. It's a huge, huge you know, problem. Uh, where I think we should uh, be very thankful right now you know, to the government and to the tax authorities is the fact that none of the states have made any changes to the tax rates. Okay. Now so bear in mind the states have a the authority yeah. even in GST to alter the tax rates. Right. Right. So if some states start altering the rates of a few products, some other states alter for a few more products, that's going to be really, really tough. So uh, can we do it, say for instance, eight months down the line? They can do it any time. They just need to go to the GST council and the GST council needs to agree, but they can do it any time. And GST council will entertain uh, requests like these from individual states? It would depend on how the state projects its case. Okay. So how well does the state project its case? And I mean, taking the example of uh, oil that you mentioned, uh, how would someone decide whether a particular oil is a hair oil or a cooking oil? Sure. So coconut oil is used in, in virtually the entire country as a hair oil, uh, but in the state of Kerala it is used as a cooking oil. Okay. So is it primarily a cooking oil which is also used for uh, applying on the hair or is it primarily a hair oil which is used in some places for cooking? Now that's a fact specific matter relating to that state which the tax authorities have to you know, get into. Okay, Mr. Patel, let me come to you uh, and point out to me any other transition issues that you are facing. But I do want to ask you, have uh, distributors done any maths in terms of uh, the change in margins at all so far? I didn't get your question, ma'am. Have uh, distributors done any maths uh, in, in, uh, in the context of your conversations with, your co with the companies that you get your material from, uh, how the margins will be impacted in the GST regime? Yes, since uh, most of our product are uh, landing in 81% of our product are landing in 18%, uh, we are finding it difficult to cope up with the margins, whatever which we are getting right now. So a uh, few of the companies have assured us of enhancing the margins and coping up the expenses which will be incurred in the GST regime. Again. Colgate has gone forward and uh, enhanced their margin by 0.65. They have initially enhanced it by 0.25 and just on 1st of July they have enhanced again by 0.40. So entire uh, close up uh, Colgate margin has been gone up by 0.65. We have written to all the companies uh, regarding these issues and the companies are responding as yet the response from the companies is still awaited. Okay, sure. Thank you for that information, Mr. Patel. Many, uh, why you know this, this, the distributors or you know smaller businesses will have their challenges in terms of technologies. What is the feedback from the, some of the larger companies that you deal with? See, the larger companies have been working on the technology for a long time now. Many of them but have been see, working for working last six months. Technology, but until you know the APIs got rolled out last time, even in the last uh, sort of week of June. Uh, so, and until those APIs got rolled out, nobody had a ready solution really, right? So while you know you can, your ERP systems of course can yeah. be ready and it yeah. worked. Uh, but of course, I haven't seen a solution so far, you know, ready uh, solution which is ready to file the returns, pull all the stuff from my ERP as yet. Okay, so let me give you a pleasant surprise. I work for Deloitte and we have, have a ready-made solution. <laughs> Uh, we have a ready-made solution which has been going, which has gone live on 1st of July itself. Okay. And we are ready and we are able to work with all our clients and pull out the data and push the data into the GSP. We are able to do everything without too much of, uh, you know, effort. Okay. And, and possibly a few more people would have something similar. But large companies typically have an ERP. Right. I have not come across too many mid-sized companies which don't have an ERP. Mm. So large companies certainly have an ERP. Uh, it yes, could sir, be SAP, uh, it could be Oracle, it could be anything else. Mr. Patel, you wanted to come in here? Yeah, sir, but in FMCG sector, there are only few, say about 15 companies who are running on centralized software. But if you see the quantity of distributors across India, there are 4 lakh distributors across India. Leaving a few aside, still there is a major quantity of distributors who are using 
local mail softwares like mid size company softwares which in turn are not if, uh, asps of uh, asp for the uh, gst regime so this companies and this softwares are finding it difficult to cope up with as you rightly said that number of larger companies are already having it so uh, pa mr patel if i have understood it correctly your point is that the the erp systems uh, are not equipped to capture the data is that your point no i want to say that major big fmcg companies have an online software installed at the distributor point from where the distributor does the billing okay it's a centralized uh, system right? it's on sap i think but the smaller distributors where companies that not provide a software they have procured a software from a local company or a smaller company okay and what are the challenges that they are facing there then now these smaller companies are not tied up with the asps and hence coping up with the gsp is becoming an issue for us okay okay how is that uh, i think what he is mentioning is a fact that uh, not all fmcg companies have network all their distributors and you know at all their trade channels so at certain points of time the network gets extended the erp gets extended mm. till possibly the fmcg or the pharma companies local branch okay. till that level it is there once the goods yeah. leave the branch and then they move on in different trade channels they are not integrated and they are not linked okay. but at that level also there has been a lot of lot of action i would say in the last uh, maybe 15 20 days okay yes where exactly. most of the local software service providers also who provide the locally made software have upgraded themselves to gst okay and when they have upgraded themselves to gst they have done it in a phased manner where they have first taken on the invoice generation and they have completed that because that's a show stopper otherwise business will stop on 1st of july sure. exactly. then they have gone to debit note credit notes now they are getting to the gst registers so they are doing it in a phased manner Okay. So all over the country, I would say, with the level of software awareness that we have in our country, uh, it is something which should happen during the rest of the month. Okay. All right, Mr. 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 Patel. Let me uh, uh, give the last word to you on. Uh, you know, we've just entered the first week of the GST regime. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, what sort of support do you seek from the companies that you source your uh, goods from? and also um, in terms of uh, any assistance from the government uh, any expectations on that front excuse me so uh, any uh, from going forth uh, in the next coming in the uh, in the coming weeks uh, what is the conversation are you going to have with the companies that you source your goods from and also any expectations from the government uh companies uh, will be shortly resuming their supplies in a day or two as we were uh, informed by many of the companies that they will be resuming their supply from 5th but uh, it does not seem the case that uh, most of the companies and since the distributor are not uh, still ready and neither the retail trade is ready to buy their goods so uh, we are expecting that uh, business will resume as normal from 10th to 15th of this month all right from, from government uh, we are expecting that company the retail stocks the stocks which were lying into the retail trade and if the retail trade uh, goes on into having a uh, billing done through gst so the differences in the margin which they have to pay gst neither of the companies are giving any answer or any feedback on what is going to be the quantum of reimbursement to the retail trade in terms of the tax to be paid gst to be paid to the government as of now uh, the retail trade was uh, been given the vat deduction bills but in gst regime where the quantity has gone down from tax rate so the reimbursement has not been confirmed by any company as of now and this quantity is huge a retailer might land up uh, spending say about 20 to 25000 rupees on his stocks at the end of the day what he was carrying on 30th of june okay
Okay, so that communication, Mani, hasn't happened and I'm hoping over the course of next few weeks that happens. Uh, last word to you, Mani, on uh, in the coming weeks, where do you see challenges and uh, what should be the areas immediately that small businesses should focus on? I believe small businesses have waited for a long time on a wait and watch mode to see whether GST is going to happen. And that could be the reason why some of them did not get prepared. Because even as late as the end of June, quite a few people were thinking the government will extend it again. We know they are going to extend it. That's not happened. Yeah, I was so speaking since with somebody who said that, you know, 3rd of June they got a call from a client that where do we start now? Yeah. And since that has happened, I believe especially for small businesses, what is imperative now, it's happened, it's going to be here. We are going to have this tax system for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Get prepared if you have not get started. Roll up your sleeves, get things done. The good part is the software is available, the tax advice is available. It's a question of investing that amount of money and getting set. And I think from the government side, the first two things that you know businesses will be awaiting is that summary return form that initially uh, will need to be filed. And also the details on credit transfer document, uh, which the draft rules are out. But I'm not sure if there is full clarity on that front. No, the trans, uh, the trans 01 form has already been published. Okay. The return in the return form 3B has also been published. Okay. So that's available, you know, for anyone who wants to do that. But okay. uh, since this is a system which is run by a web portal, right. and since the government has built huge amount of IT infrastructure, mm -hmm. what people need to realize is it may not be doing exactly what they were doing in VAT. Yeah. It may not be doing what exactly they were doing in service tax. Right. It may be a little more than that. Now we have a choice. Uh, are we going to crib about it and are we going to say, India does not have so many places which have a Wi-Fi hotspot. Right. Uh, we are not technology ready. Our invoices are not I ready. I think you've left are we those going arguments far behind. Absolutely. Or are we going to get prepared and we are going to go? Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, businesses will do that. Mani, exactly. Mr. Patel, thank you for joining us on uh, the Hello GST show. And thank you so much for watching. We'll continue to take stock of what challenges businesses are facing in the transition period. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.